definitely. I'm not into any really hardcore sport that I can make a really nice analogy with because um, my thing is hula hooping. Um, I actually missed WordPress last year because I was um, heavily drugged on morphine due to a tragic hula hooping accident. But now I'm here and I'm alive. So um, anyway, let me t start my talk. You can share the Twitter love if you find that. So, Innovate South Africa. Innovate South Africa's mission is to inspire and empower a generation of problem solvers, a generation that can think innovatively and think entrepreneurially. We go out to schools and youth organizations and we en um, get engage youth in practical design challenges. We run an annual innovation challenge as well as the Code for Cape Town program, which is what I'm here to speak to you about. Code for Cape Town introduces high school girls to web building skills and exposes them to opportunities in the IT industry. The Code for Cape Town program teaches coding in a way that's appealing to girls. So what we do is we frame coding skills as tools to tackle social problems. Women are naturally empathetic and I believe a lot of women make vital career choices early on um, based on a social conscience and I believe this is one of the reasons that the social sciences are flooded by women. So in our quest to make coding um, attractive to females, we start by presenting girls with a real human need that needs a solution. And then the participants of the program learn to code and create the web as a means of building a solution. Um, so, Code for Cape Town ran for the um, first time in July this year. 24 girls from Kailicha spent every day of their winter holiday um, learning to code. They learned how to apply the human-centered design process to design a solution to a challenge. They learned the basics of HTML, the basics of CSS, and how to use WordPress to build a website. And they learned how to pitch and present an idea. So, I have a video here. And what are you most excited to learn? To do more blogging and making my own website. So exciting to special for us teachers. Uh, firstly, I'm proud because I'm a good guy. It was an opportunity that I would never get. The Code for Cape Town Challenge aims to introduce girls to coding and encourage them to pursue careers in IT and STEM more broadly. In July 2014, Innovate South Africa ran the Code for Cape Town Challenge in Kyle Leacher. 24 grade 10 and 11 girls got their first taste of web building and using design for social impact. The girls learned the basics of HTML and CSS, discovering the languages of the web, and becoming able to create, not just consume, the web. They learned how to use WordPress and created their own personal web pages. Using these web design skills, the girls worked in groups to tackle a real-life challenge for real clients. We worked with six local organizations, including tutoring and environmental clubs, who had websites that don't communicate their valuable resources and necessary information to the youth involved in the organizations. The Code for Cape Town's group's task was to build a mobile communication platform between the organization and its beneficiaries. To tackle this challenge, the girls went through a rigorous human-centered design process in order to understand the users they were designing for. By the end of the program, the girls had successfully applied their newly learned skills to solve a real-life challenge. The message behind Code for Cape Town is not learning to code for the sake of code, but rather to develop a powerful toolkit of skills that can be used for social change. We want young girls to see themselves as powerful agents of change and developing as young professionals who can make an impact in South Africa. During the program, the girls were visited by local entrepreneurs and industry professionals who shared their stories and exposed the girls to a range of opportunities. A large part of what we do in WeThemes is about freedom and empowerment. So, WordPress allows you to do whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do, however you want to do, and ultimately to have a voice. Right? So you don't have to go and study an advanced degree to get up and running on WordPress, or to help your friend get up and running on WordPress either. It's all about having that freedom to do what you need to do, when you need to do it, 
and to empower yourself and somebody else to do the same. To prove just how much fun coding can be, in the last week is there a maker party, a party in a computer room. The girls invited friends who they taught their newly found skills. Together they used basic HTML to make their own memes and learned about hacking by hacking the happy dance. We discovered that coding can be fun and creative. So I did think about making you guys hack the happy dance, but uh, yeah, I was decided not. Um, so how fun did we uh, actually manage to make learning to code? Well, after the program, 71% of our participants um, said that they wanted to pursue careers in um, computer science or IT. But the important thing was that 73% of them said that it's because they enjoy it and find it fun. Um, and our attendance record did support that they said they were having fun because we had like 91% attendance throughout the three weeks of winter holidays, which was quite amazing. Um, and when we asked the girls to describe their experience um, learning HTML and CSS, the most popular word was fun, followed by creative and encouraging. Um, and one person said difficult, but most of them chose to describe it as a challenge. Um, and then similarly, when we asked them about um, the experience using WordPress, um, once again, fun um, dominated, followed by a challenge and creative. So, I think it's time that you met some of the Code for Cape Town girls, um, and I've extracted some snippets from their reflections to give you a sort of sense of the excitement that they felt. Um, meet Tim Baker. She's a thoughtful young girl who likes poetry and astronomy, and this is what she wrote on day two. It's also amazing. I mean, last week I learned to code using H... Ah. <laughs> so far, the lessons are full of enthusiasm, oomph, determination, curiosity and a hunger to know more. They make me want to keep on learning and exploring. They've completely changed how I view programming and IT as a whole and as a girl. It gave me a total outlook on how I see technology, problem solving, and problem identification. It's also amazing. I mean, last week I learned to code using HTML and CSS, and now I have a website, and I can blog about anything I want. What's more and tremendously amazing is the fact that I can now use all that I've learned to do anything I want to my website to make it more interesting and appealing. Who would have thought that I'd have my own website and be able to make it the way I want it to be? No one, but then I guess I should always expect the unexpected. Excitement is so inevitable at the moment. I can't stop smiling and giggling. Well, this will be useful in the future. In different ways, I mean, I can start my own little business and make other people's websites fun and appealing. I don't want to say much except watch your space. This is awesome. So the girls were pretty excited. So imagine we had a room of 24 of these girls for three weeks. It was, it was really fun. Um, and this is Mandisa. Um, so the funny thing was is that they all had to apply to this program and write me beautiful motivational letters about why they really wanted to attend. And they were all like, yeah, we think this is going to be amazing. And then on day two, um, they expressed some of their real op opinions on how they thought that it would be terrible. I think Mandisa actually said she thought she would have to take pills for depression. <laughs> Hashtag just joking. <laughs> But then she said, I didn't think the project would be this fun and so understandable. They actually have proven a point to me that learning a programming language can be fun and exciting. And I think that after the three weeks, I'll be able to practice on my own the things that we did in class with our tutors. I'm planning on learning more about HTML and CSS. These few weeks have really inspired me, and now I'm considering computer science or engineering. Um, and actually, they said that they planned on learning more HTML and CSS. They came to me a while later and they're like, um, Emma, can we have a program in December? We'd like to learn some back-end stuff. <laughs> wow. We, these are amazing girls. And um, Mandisa said, wow, I feel like such an important person with all the professional people, thanks Hugh and Matt, um, coming to share their knowledge with us. I really don't regret taking part in the program. Um, and so the visits from industry, of which Wu themes were one of them, um, were really, really fantastic for the girls. Um, the girls said that it really broadened their perspective on career options and the ways in which technology can be applied um, to solve problems. And then another thing that they really enjoyed was just hearing the stories of successful entrepreneurs. 
and realizing that there are a lot of ups and downs along the path that leads to that success. Um, and the girls were going through their own first little entrepreneurial challenge. They'd each been given a client who gave them a brief and they needed a problem solved. And the girls now had to work in groups to come up with a solution. So the clients were youth organizations who had really bad websites that just didn't speak to the youth that they were meant to be serving. Um, and the girls now had to create a, a new mobile platform to solve this problem. Um, and so it was very real to them as they were going through for the first time this sort of experience of actually um, acting like a professional. Um, and so by the end of the, by the, end of the session, 94% um, of our participants said that they were now saw themselves as more likely to try and use technology to solve problems. Um, and this, they also, a majority of them, said that they felt that the site they created is a valuable resource for their client. Um, and a while back, a group of the girls came to me and they said, Oh, Emma, um, actually, we know what we're doing in our holidays. We've noticed. We've noticed that the schools in Kayalicha, their websites suck. So, we are going to redo them. So, this made me happy because whether or not that's a successful venture that they take on, the fact that these girls, who are 17 years old, feel that they have the power to go to schools in their own community and say, your website sucks because it doesn't communicate to me, I am going to build a new one. That's the kind of empowerment that we're sort of thinking about. Um, so this is Kaliswa, she's one of these website improvers, um, and she really liked this whole idea of problem solving, um, and she now wants to be an engineer. She said, whoever would have thought that short talkative Kaliswa would one day build a website from scratch? I would have told that person it's not possible, but considering the work I did this past week and the work that awaits me in the next week, I'll actually be building a website for an organization. That was in week two. Um, then this refers to uh, the We Themes visit. This week we spent some time with the two coolest nerds ever. <laughs> That's what they called themselves anyway. <laughs> they, she wasn't being rude. They were from a company called Woo Themes, which deals with WordPress. Yes, I know, we are that cool. <laughs> the things they taught us about WordPress will really come in handy when building this website. I have so much confidence now that I can really build this website because it's becoming a reality day by day. So, apart from teaching coding skills and problem-solving skills, we also focused on professional development. And the first step was just exposing the girls to people in the industry. Um, they also all created email accounts, um, just name, surname, kind of Gmail accounts, um, that they used to interact in a professional kind of way with their clients. They created LinkedIn profiles. We did a whole workshop identifying soft skills, hard skills, articulating those well. And then the exciting part was they created their own personal pages. And probably the thing that made them feel most professional was instead of just giving them a certificate at the end, we gave them a pack of business cards referring to their personal WordPress site. Very exciting. Um, and then finally, in terms of career readiness, the thing that we really tried to get across to these girls is that they're able to teach themselves we wanted them to walk away feeling empowered that they could teach themselves the things that they realized that they needed to know. So on the last day of the program, we sort of gave, asked them to write an open-ended reflection about how Code for Cape Town had impacted their career considerations. And these were the most common um, sort of ideas that came through. Um, changed my perceptions of women in IT, showed me I'm capable of a career in IT, improved my confidence levels, showed me that coding can be used for social impact, motivated me to pursue my dreams, and broadened my perspective around career options. So you'll see that confidence and self-efficacy, feeling capable, is really important for these young girls. And that's a major barrier that stops them pursuing um, a career in tech. Um, and it's actually across our programs, really what we find, that. When we ask our participants, what was the most valuable thing that you, you learned through this program? They, they tell us over and over again that it's 
the realization through the experience that they can take an idea that they have through to reality that's just so empowering. Um, and that's what really builds their self-confidence in their own ability. Um, so I think that's something that when we're dealing with young girls that we, and if we want them to stand up and come into the tech um, industry that we really need to address. So Yolanda said, I never thought I'd find technology fun and awesome as I usually thought that it was meant for guys. Um, Rebakazi said, at first I thought IT and programming was for boys and not for girls. I thought it was very difficult and that I would not cope with it in the future. Through this program, I was able to decide and be convinced that IT is what I want to do in university. And Hilda said, at first I thought IT was for boys. I can now see that I can be something I never thought I could be. Um, so, Kofi Capeton is not just about teaching hard skills, but it's about shifting young girls' perspectives about the possibilities of technology and about their place as women um, in the industry. So going forward into 2015, um, we want to develop a scalable model um, and triple the number of girls that we take in. Um, so basically we can do that by training people to run the program on multiple sites. And then we really want to focus on um, putting these girls onto continuous learning paths. So linking them up according to what their end goal is, linking them up with learning opportunities um, to improve their skill set. Um, so I really want to put out an open call to the WordPress community to come on board with us in 2015 and grow Code for Cape Town's impact. Let us um, empower more young girls. Um, so here's some requests that I have for you. We, we have a website, but it's not the coolest website in the world yet, um, mainly due to extreme lack of manpower. So anyone wants to help us out? That would be great. We also have grand schemes to build this really awesome plugin. Um, so if anyone wants to help us out with that. Um, then if anyone wants to come and run a really interesting workshop or invite some of the, girl, the, the alumni to come and see what you do. Um, you've, you've heard the stories, how much they appreciate that. Then we're running a Thunder Fund campaign because paying for these girls' transport to and from venues and food and blah, 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 that all costs money. So we have a Thunder Fund campaign, which is thunderfund.com forward slash code for Cape Town. So request money for days on that. That would be great. And then a little bit of love because working in improving education in South Africa is kind of tough. Um, so it's really nice when people come behind you and support you in what you do. And since our ultimate goal is to um, build skills that can feed the local um, IT industry, I kind of need some feedback. I need to know what the industry needs so that I can help everyone work together so we can be growing up young um, professionals that can enter industry. So please, um, yeah, shoot me an email or something, get in touch. If you have ideas, we're, we're always very happy to hear. Um, and that concludes what I have to say. Thank you so much, Emma. Uh, we're going to have uh, some questions. If you want to answer them, don't run away just yet. Please don't feel back yet, bad if you've got any questions in the back row. Um, I know you might feel bad asking them because of Gareth and the whole having to run. But just please shoot. Any questions? Any questions for Emma at all? Gentlemen, right here, Nick. Here we go. Hi. Uh, quick question, because I know three weeks to learn anything is not a lot of time. And you also did a lot of business development and personal growth and so on. Uh, in that period, what were they actually able to accomplish from a code perspective? Like, can we go to the website and see a showcase of the work that they did? Um, were they able to do minor things? Uh, were there some that did really great work? Like, could you tell us a bit more about what they actually did from a technical perspective? Okay, great. So, um, what, what they built was a basic little site for, um, that's a source of communication between an, a youth organization. So, say, like, one of them was a tutoring organization. 
um, and they put together a little WordPress site that communi like task orientated. Um, so they were able to um, put together something where they, you can access frequently asked questions, current posts about the latest news from that organization. They were basic little WordPress sites that they were able to do. I can get you some examples. We made a bit of a blunder. We handed them over to the clients, and the clients destroyed what the girls did quite nicely. Um, <laughs> so I have to actually... So it was actually the clients that destroyed the work that the girls put together. <laughs> anyway, so, but that was a blunder from our side. Um, yeah, so that is one thing that, that I have to say outright. We are not the ones that go out and make these girls software developers. But we're the ones that... we're. Um, like new client acquisition, pretty much. So we go out there and we take girls that weren't considering any kind of career in this field and get them to consider it. And then we can feed them into further learning. Cool. Got a question? Uh, I just wanted to know if you're a registered non-profit organisation. Um, that we should be registered in uh, hopefully less than a month. Once you are, come and see me, I've got a solution for you. Ah, oh, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you guys. Are there any more questions for, for Emma about Code for Cape Town? Yes. One more over there. First, I just have to say wow. Um, um, and secondly, how long have you been involved and how did you get the funding or ability to start this in the first place? Okay, so um, it's start, Innovate South Africa has been around longer than Code for Cape Town has been around. This is just one of our programs. Um, and the, the funding, um, wonderful Hillary Clinton um, has a lot of money for women residing in Africa who want to support women in IT. So we were awarded some funding as Innovate South Africa to run a project like this. And that's how it started. Um, and now it's, it was a seed grant, so now we're trying to actually build it into something sustainable.